This is our fourth video, everybody. Number four. First one, fatherhood. Father. Second one, manhood. Third one, relationships 101. And this one, special. James, what's the topic for today? So I have a question. What's the question? We do know relationships take work, right? Mm-hmm. So what if we treated it like a business? Hmm. Let's get into it. All right, treating like a business, huh? Without a doubt. So can you please describe what you're saying as a business? Because some people don't like business. A lot of people don't like relationships can be a job where you got to just come home at a certain time, like you're on curfew. Right. Or that your wife can be some sort of maybe a CEO or your husband can be a boss or a boyfriend or spouse or whoever. But right. how would you, can you give us a little more input on that about what you mean, please? So... We, we go through and there's always a lot of questions. Yeah. And I really wanted to try my best to simplify in the easiest of ways what a relationship really is. Now, everyone in some way, shape or form has a job and they have a role that they play with inside of that job. So why can we not treat our relationship as a business and or job? Hmm. So let me break it down to you this way. The business, quote unquote, Every time you hear me say the word business, I'm substituting that for relationship. Okay. Right? So the business of what you're upkeeping at all times is the relationship. Usually, in the business, you have positions, right? You have two very vital positions in any business. You have the CEO, which is basically the face of the company. That's the name. I like to say that'll be the husband and the boyfriend because usually in marriage, the woman takes the name of the man when they are married. <clears throat> and then you have the manager, right? Mm. The manager is someone who is known for the day-to-day -day operations. They're the ones who you see in the businesses every day. They're the ones who's troubleshooting every problem that comes in and making sure the business runs efficiently. That can be the girlfriend and or the wife. Are you following me? CEO and managers, what are they supposed to do? So it's simple. So let's let's break it down foundationally, right? So let's say the relationship is a plot of land, which is something everybody wants to be in is a relationship. So it's a plot of land. So the very first thing that you have to do is you have to build a business, which means you have to build the foundation of what you want a relationship to be, especially if you're the CEO, because you're going to be the face. Mm -hmm. Being the face of a company means you have to have the integrity and you genuinely have to lead by example. You cannot be a, a two-way type of CEO. It has to be a legitimate, consistent thing 100%. So when you're building a business, what do you need? You need your CEO and you need your manager, right? When you're building a business, you have to first have the plans, mm. right? You got a plot of land, you buy the land, and now you make the plans for the business. Why plans? Well, why, why is a plan so important? Because plans are basically the foundational structure of everything. Usually whenever you're building a business and you have a plot of land, the very first thing that they do in order to uh, start the foundation is they dig a hole. Mm -hmm. Right, they take that land and they create a whole entire hole. What does digging a hole on yourself really means? It's actually identifying certain errors and wrongs inside of yourself, showing thy self approved, which means you're literally reflecting on the things that you did wrong in the past, you're correcting them, i.e., digging that particular hole so you can be ready for the relationship that's coming to you shortly. Right, so that's building a plan, right. The second part, after you made the plans, is you have to go through the interview process, i.e. dating, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now this is gonna be a little bit controversial, but when you're going through an interview process, if anyone has ever been a manager, do you usually interview one person for a position or multiple? Mm, well, it kind of depends. Truthfully, you read a lot of different applications and then you only call so many. Yeah. You know, I want to interview maybe two or three today because these are the best candidates for the job. No, that's not me sitting here suggesting for men to have multiple girlfriends, but <clears throat> this is me. Say that again. <laughs> I'm not suggesting for men to have multiple girlfriends. Say that one more time. I'm not suggesting for men to have multiple girlfriends. Mm. However, I am identifying that while a man is single, he's going to be looking at multiple pictures. He's going to be looking at multiple profiles just so we can narrow down who might be the right fit for him. So that's me identifying like we got to be real. A man is going to be looking at multiple things as, as long as he's in that's part of that planning process, right? Mm -hmm. So then you move into that interviewing process, which is actual dating, and then you do your engineer approval. So whenever you submit the plans into the city and you have an engineer who actually approves those plans, I like to say that's literally your friends and family checking off those particular boxes and vice versa. The woman has to, the woman's family have to check off on the box on that one as well, because if there's any family turmoil in between the two of them, it's kind of going to be toxic for that particular family, mm. right? For y'all coming together. So we found the plot, we dug a hole, we went through the interviewing process, and now we have the engineer approval. What's left? Building the foundation of that relationship and or business. What is the one thing that every business needs to be successful? Slaves. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I like that though. That's funny. <laughs> Standard operating procedures, mm -hmm. other known as SOPs. Every single business has SOPs, which is the rules and regulations. Wait, SOPs? Yes. Or SOBs? <laughs> they they have both, honestly. But <laughs> SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would immediately say workers for a business to be successful. But what's the purpose of having a business? filled with workers and they don't know what to do. Have you ever been in a job before where the manager knew absolutely not know what to do? You were looking at the manager and like, I know how to run this job better than this individual. It, it, what, how was it at that job, right? It was chaos. I want you to think about that inside your relationship. If you appoint the wrong manager to handle the business, what is it gonna be? Chaos. Mm. A lot of dysfunction, a lot of anger, a lot of arguing, and that's things that people don't want. How do you fix that chaos? All businesses call it standard operating procedures. The key word in that is standard. We talked about this in the last video briefly in Relationships 101. The word standard means bare minimum. So what, by chase after, yeah. not, not, oh, I know he liked this, so I'm going to use this to manipulate. It's setting the standard. That's what I mean, chasing after. The standard, the word standard means bare minimum, yeah. basic. That's what I'm asking you to chase after. So if you're asking, if you want to set the standard for them to have the same level of motivation, perfect. Same mentality of growth, perfect. Things of that nature, having this, being on the same wavelength of what people are saying right now. That's what I mean by chase after. Um, the manipulation is when things come in there. That's like, all right, I had sex with him and now he's addicted to sex and I know I can get A, B, C, D, E, F, G out of him. That's a different ball game. That's nowhere near what I'm specifying so thank you for asking that question i'm basically saying set the standard if you want a man to come to the table with the bare minimum that's the standard that's mm -hmm. what standard means you have to have at least this that's what you need them to chase after you know what i mean Jeez. it means what you already need to have just to be considered for the job you need to follow these instructions for consistency right that's what standard just downright breaks for so when you're in a relationship with a woman and a man, I feel that it is quite vital for you to build standard operating procedures. If you were in a relationship with a woman, could you tell me three, maybe even four things that you would say is mandatory for the relationship to be consistent in your opinion? What would be, tell me two items on your standard operating positions that you would need from a woman for your relationship to stay consistent. She better respect me, and she better respect me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by respect? Are you talking about somebody who's just going to cower 
or like literally do everything that she exactly. I, she better do what Daddy says. <laughs> Every single thing. Everything. <laughs> Every word. Plus the toilet. Do it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hot ham and cheese. This man, this man got problems over here. Uh, stay away from this one, young people, right here. <laughs> Unless you want to be a servant. <laughs> <laughs> Said, come here. <laughs> no, but truthfully, um, I, I, I would agree on respect. But what would you yeah. say the two things you would say for a woman, like no. you would need a woman for consistency? Faithfulness. All right. So you're saying respect and faithfulness. How can a woman show you respect? But she better do what I say. <laughs> I swear, you better. Whoever you is, better listen. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that. In. <laughs> oh goodness. So we have our business, which is the relationship. You have the CEO who will be the man because he's the face. And like I said, he has to have the integrity 100%. He also has to not uh, be double-edged sword. You know, he has to be straightforward every single time. If, if, if they have agreed upon these SOPs, he has to stand firm on that. Because as soon as he veers off of it, guess what's going to happen to the whole entire structure of the business? It will fall. Yeah, it will fall. Now let me ask you this, <clears throat> since you're a happily married man. Right. Ah! I'm playing. Um, what are what was two things that you look for? So, it still builds into the business. The first thing that I always say has to be communication, because that that was gonna be mine <laughs> too. No, it, it it always has to be in communication, and I'm still gonna reference it to the business structure. Yeah, yeah. In most businesses, in most jobs that you guys can think of, 100 percent, in a good running functional business they tend to have business meetings you know they'll come talk about the finances they talk about new promotions whatever it may be now let's think about that inside of a relationship form you can actually come to the table and talk about finances a promotion can actually be a trip you know what let's save up for a trip to go to disney world or let's uh i want to do it. can we go yeah we can yes in, in 2036 bet oh wait no. all right we gotta say 50 cents a day yeah all right, cool. <laughs> But it's, 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 you can literally come to the table for the finances. Promotions can be vacations or just shopping sprees and stuff like that. Because, you know, promotions is always something positive to, to build up a brand. Um, and then also you bring to the table certain things that weren't working all, all good, you know. Mm -hmm. um, business was down last week. We didn't have enough, um, you know, to-go sales or whatever it may be inside of a relationship. Last week I felt our communication was off or... Um, I felt that you dedicated too much time towards one area over something else. How can we fix it? You, that's, the, that's number one SOP for me is that communication because that is a great foundation. And also when you're communicating, it's not about talking. It's specifically about listening. And when you're listening to somebody, it's very, very vital of doing two things. When they're actually speaking, it's very good to repeat what you're listening to in your head so it sticks. Also repeat in your head what you're going to respond to so you can get a gauge of how you're going to actually say something. Because everyone can probably agree with me that you may have said something to somebody that was so innocent, but the way it came out, they took it very offensive. Mm. You know what I mean? So I remember hearing somebody said this at work a couple of years ago. And I asked them, like, what advice would you give us youngsters when we're considering, like, you know, a companionship? He said that. One thing that he said I remember to this day, and he said, it's not, it's Speak not. Speak out. What, <laughs> stop. You can't use that. I, I use that. I, you, this is a flashback moment. This is what he did. <laughs> so uh, are we saying. Speak up. Are we saying. Speak up. What I said, group? it's not what you say, it's how you say it. 100%. Can you elaborate on that for a, just a minute? Just a bit. No, so. If you don't deliver something in the appropriate way, everything you can do and or say can go sideways. Here's a very easy example. Somebody calls you for an interview, you answer for what's up, how you doing? In comparison to hey, or hello, this is, and then my name. Yeah. If you answer the phone on the business call, what's up, what's going on? You immediately got that person who's trying to interview like I don't know if I want this person yeah. as a good candidate because they don't even answer their phone professionally or they don't mm -hmm. even stick in the role in comparison to hello my name is James how may I help you you know that already put somebody in the area on how they're going to kind of direct that conversation um, in a relationship um, what's a good example uh, 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 
perfect. In a relationship, you guys have a spending budget, right? Mm -hmm. And someone goes over the budget. If you approach the, usually it's the women who goes over the budget. Yeah, I'm shouting you out right now. Don't, <clears throat> you know you always go over the daggone budget. Fellas. You know you do. Fellas, got a woman right there, right? That's what you do. Mm. Can I say something? Say it. Can I say it? Say it. Yeah! Right. You take her out to dinner. Out to dinner. McDonald's. Not at all. No, no, say it. We ain't gonna say no McDonald's. Come on, you gotta go with me, man. I Agree know. with me. Yeah. McDonald's. Uh-huh. Oh, you gotta say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dollar menu. Dollar menu. Four dollars. No cheese. That's all you do. No cheese. If they want that cheese, you better get them water. <laughs> they get you all gassy and bloated. You gotta be cheap with it, man. You learn from me. They're, cheap. See, there's a difference between cheap and frugal. We talking about no, this no, already. No, no, no. Yes, it is. It's good to be cheap. Listen, if I ever get married, mm -hmm. honeymoon, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the garage. Mm -hmm. She want to go out to eat? Your money. You want to go out to eat? Popeyes, red beans and rice, and one biscuit. Only red beans? That's like $1.87. <laughs> It'll fill you up, though. <laughs> It'll fill you up, though. It'll stick to them guts. <laughs> That's what you need. Yep. If you know, you do know if you take it to McDonald's, you're about to get in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> so you better be ready <laughs> for all that smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, so it's just uh, finances. Usually a, a budget is blown. Mm -hmm. If you approach your woman more like, what are you doing? Like, you know we had this budget and you're more aggressive about it. Guess what type of reaction you're going to get? Defensive and aggression. Yeah. Defensive and aggression. However, if you approach her like we went over the budget this much, which means I have to take away from this and it's going to take longer to do that, there's a level of understanding there. I understand that you went over the budget, but because of it, now I have to take away from another area just so we can maintain this budget in this particular area. That's a little bit more reasonable of a yeah. conversation. <clears throat> you're saying the same stuff, but you're literally delivering it in two different ways. No. Yeah. You know, um, if you, in, in some to most cases, if you deliver it in the second way, the person will actually realize the wrong that they did in comparison to, it's only $5, what you talking about, you know? <laughs> and that's just an argument no one really wants to. Like, if, we, if we was to treat it honestly like a business, the other key points when you think about a job and or a business, if you wanna have longevity at a business, you have to physically stay at the top of your game, Yeah. right? Why is that? Well, I'll put it to you like this. We have those standard operating procedures. Those you just fart? No, I scooted over the chair. I don't wilt flowers like you. Yes. You gonna bring that up? Yes. You, you be, you, it's powerful, that's terrible. It was all warm, it smelled like beef stew that actually sat in a crock pot for two days without being refrigerated. Uh. It was rough. <laughs> Yes, it's that specific. It was rough. Extra onion flashback, and potato. Um, no, but it's just you have to stay on the top of your game. Because mm -hmm. guess what? We have a standard, right? If you go below that standard, that's when things tend to break down and buckle. And in a business and or job, if a manager isn't doing their job, if a CEO is not doing their job, what happens? Oh, man, it's done. Termination and then yeah. you get replaced, right? Mm-hmm. So you, that's telling me that you have to stay at the top of your game, which means you have to stay at the standard and then go above it, right? But you never drop underneath that standard. Because if we're thinking about it in a business, let's say, like I said, in my case in point, communication is my number one SOP. Yeah. If communication is not working, guess what? A lot of insecurities comes up, a lot of accusations comes up, and that tends to break down the foundation of a relationship. Because what happens when you're not talking to one another? You assume. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no communication going, but it starts to break down. And guess what? Some in most cases, you either uh, reprimand. Because yeah. when there's one mistake made, you get written up, right? When there's two, you get written up with a final run. And when there was three or four, you know, then you get terminated. Now, I'm not saying there should be a three or four time rule. If it comes for infidelity, that's probably like stealing. stealing. So it's stealing. That's instant termination or infidelity. Yeah. There are certain things that might turn out to be instant termination, just like in an SOP. But if there are certain mistakes, you write it up, you keep a track of it, you coach it, you rebuild, and you get them back up to that standard. Right? Okay. Am I, are you following me right away? Are you following me when it comes to the business module? Yeah. If we treated it like that, 
you stay at the top of your game. If you want to be a great CEO, you need to have integrity and you need to stay the face, which means you need to look the part at all times. You need to have integrity. Integrity in its simplest form means doing what is right when no one is looking, which means you want to do what is right at all times. Yeah. This is even difficult too, but uh, communication. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to use me as an example again. That integrity. There is a beautiful female who walks past me in a great dress and looking absolutely fantastic. When it comes to my integrity, where she go? When it comes to my integrity, mm -hmm. I might buy a similar dress for my old lady because I'm like, hey, I seen this woman in this dress and I feel you'll look great in it. And that's kind of you being very open with a lot of different things. That's just how I would do it. I don't know how anybody else would do it. Some dudes be like, man, I'm finna go, go ahead and smack them cheeks. And guess what's going to happen? It breaks down the foundation yeah. of your relationship. And then you bring in extra employees without any hiring process, i.e. kids. <laughs> We're not finna get into that. You know? right. But um, I feel that part is, you know, that communication is important. And that integrity is real. You have to do what's right at all times. I know it's difficult for men, but uh, that, integrity, that, uh, that integrity kicks in when you're talking about your trials and tribulations. Fellas, if you, honest to goodness truth, if you struggle with budgeting, if you struggle with pornography, if you struggle with self-confidence, talk to your manager about it. That's your day-to-day -day operation person. Talk to your old lady about it and watch what she can put into you. Yeah. Especially if she has already went through the process of building, doing the plans, getting the approval of the engineer 100%. And then being part of the creating of the foundation. When you when you actually find a woman who is mature, right? Mm -hmm. When you find a woman that is very mature, the manager knows how to keep the CEO in his integrity without faltering. A mature woman and or a manager can help the CEO stay with inside of his integrity. A mature woman will keep that standard as well as make sure everyone else around it mm -hmm. it stays at that standard that's the beauty of a man of a great mature woman but you also have to be a mature ceo to handle a mature woman if you are a childish ceo you will not be able to handle a mature woman and vice versa a mature man does not have time to babysit an adolescent woman and i'm not saying uh, a young, young woman, I'm saying a woman who's young in the mind, who's still acting like a child, very spoiled, wants things their way at all times. A mature man or a mature CEO does not have time for that. The, the position of a manager is very, very vital in the success of any business. You rarely see the CEO, but you see the manager every single day. And the manager is supposed to be the reflection of the CEO, and everybody can see how great the business is based off of the manager yeah. if you elect a manager who is terrible or you're not your communication and you're and you're not treating that manager right it will reflect in the business i.e the relationship once again like i said i'm trying to compare the both so it can be simple for people to think about yeah. everybody feel relationships are very complicated when they're not they're actually quite simple we can get up and go to work every day and do our job of what they taught us how to do every single day. Yeah. If you invest that and pull that over to a relationship, guess what you can do easily every single day? Have a successful relationship. Why is a successful relationship important? In fact, why is it needed? Like for right now in this, in this modern era, why is it needed? A successful relationship is a necessity so we can break the habits of our generations after. You know what I mean? If we, if we allow our generations after to come up in chaos, that is the only thing that is going to continue. But if it comes up in structure, discipline, integrity, truth, love, communication, honesty, understanding, that's exactly what they're going to exhibit. And that's what actually is going to help change everything else outside of the household and in the world that needs to pour out into the world. If we pour out chaos, that's what it's going to be. If we pour out love, structure, discipline, and everything that I just said, that's what's going to pour out. We need that. Women need that security. 
men too also need that security. A, a man does need words of affirmation from a woman. He needs to make sure, like, the only reason why men tend to veer off from their position and they tend to lack in their CEO role is because they don't feel those words of affirmation. They don't feel as if their manager respects and enjoy the job that they have. You know what I mean? Yes, your day-to-day -day operations, but if I'm, if I'm that man of integrity, if I am the face of the company and I'm not faltering, like everything that I came into the business plan with, I'm still doing and exceeding at, and mm -hmm. it seems as if the manager is not happy in their position, sometimes that's even when the CEO tends to fall up. So that's why both of those positions needs to be hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It needs to be hand in hand. So it's just... Once again, I was just wondering if we treated a relationship like a business. In which individuals will know their roles. Where individuals will know their roles. And it's like, as we're getting ready to close, I really want to break down and really hone in on these, yeah. these things here. Building the business, which is the, the dating process. You know, you really want to get a feel for everything. So building the business is like buying that plot of land that's digging that hole, which means reflecting on yourself and understanding what you actually need from the manager, i.e. the woman, to build a great business. That's the building process of that business. Making the plans, which is building the structure, building the foundation. That's also where the SOTs, uh, SOPs tend to come in. The, the beginning of the SOPs comes in during the planning process, right? You interview those particular candidates so you can choose the right manager and then get that engineer approval. Oh, let's say you got the CEO, but wait a minute. He wants to rush and to just get what he wants. Mm -hmm. What what would you think can happen? So, what, and that's a beautiful question. Y'all hear that? That is a beautiful question. That's beautiful. So even in the, and we're going to break this down. Now. Break it. So even in the business and when you buy the land, guess what? It takes six to eight weeks to even start the digging process. Mm. The plans and everything needs to be approved before you can even start digging. And that's as a, that's in order to build the foundation of it. So what do you mean in regards to Russian? You talk about a man who really wants to move in with a woman right away and, and like play the role yeah. of all, being a all, businessman? All of it. All of it. I'm talking about even with females, it's just... A quick layup, you know what I'm saying? All that, like all of it. The so, like I said, it takes six to eight weeks. The biggest piece when it comes to that is that digging process, showing thyself approved, digging into yourself and pulling out those faults. If if you've done that particular section of all of it before you get the foundation of the business, guess what? You've already pointed out the errors that I got into. I, I, I you know, I, I moved in with her too soon. I didn't know I still had these insecurity problems. I, I need to make sure I know how to budget better. Uh, uh, heck, I need to hold myself at a, at a higher rate because, unfortunately, the employees that I'm bringing in to this, yeah. the, the managers that I'm selecting are not fit for it. Also, you need to be aware 100%, and then you need to prepare. Well, explain that, aware and prepare. Being aware of what you bring to the table and what your expectations is for the manager and or woman and being aware that you can't allow that to break down. No, you, you want to you wanna be aware of, of what you're bringing to the table and what she will bring to the table 100%. And you have to prepare yourself to assume the role of that position. You do have to understand being the city, CEO of any business is the highest authority outside of God. Right? It's the highest authority. Whenever someone sees your manager and your business, i.e. the relationship, it's a pure reflection of what you are doing and who you are in that relationship. It's a pure reflection. You can make as many excuses as you want. That's not me, that's her. Why did you select that candidate to be your manager, right? Yeah. Who, who, who responsibility does that still fall on? You, because you selected it. I don't care what excuse you make. She spends up all that money. She does this, she, she, she. Who selected the person to be there? You. It's about accountability. That's also about that integrity. Yeah. Doing what is right, which means keeping yourself in check. You have to be aware, and then you have to prepare for what you are about to receive. If you're not prepared, 
<laughs> the business will break down. Mm. What is it? Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> the seven again? P's. The seven P's. Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> I don't think I got with it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> now, so, so, I hope you guys receive it in the way of how I'm trying to picture it, just to kind of make it easy. Because if we can get up and go to work every single day, a relationship should be just as easy. If you have the correct mindset for it. And fun. A job should be fun, especially if you love what you do. F U N. Why did you have to say F U and then pause on the end? I did? Yeah. Oops. Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so just want to thank y'all again uh, just for tuning in. Uh, hopefully we can receive it. Um, I want to ask the question for those who see it. What would be your SOPs inside of your business and or relationship? What are your mandatory things for the relationship to be successful? I want to hear some from men and some from women. And let's just yeah. see. I would like to see if that can be a good conversation because... If you have that standard and you're not in a relationship where that standard is there, you need to burn down that business and start <laughs> over. Over. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Over. <laughs> My two men. Cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a cup of coffee in the big time. Yeah. Cup of coffee in the big time. <laughs> <laughs> You get on all of my nerves. <laughs> the Savage. Peace out, YouTube. I appreciate y'all, man. See y'all later. Word life. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and even subscribe. I thank God for giving me this platform to share with you words. And not just words, but power. Treasures from amongst men. Those who are fathers, friends, entrepreneurs, teachers, preachers. And we use this platform to really give out a message to a dying world that we are able to resurrect dead bones. It is encouraging and motivating, even inspirational for people to just come on here and to just listen and just learn something because this world needs it and even the generations after us. I have a special message to share with you after this and also included the bloopers like always. All right, guys, We're special gonna... announcement. We're about to be live very soon. Very soon. Very soon. Real soon. Very soon. Right now. Not right now. Okay, you're right. <laughs> you invite everybody. We're going to just question and answers, Q&A. That's what it's called. Yeah, Q&A. Ask, 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 ask and questions. Ask and questions. Not ask, yeah, but ask yeah. and questions. Ask and questions. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, see y'all later. Peace yes, out. All right. <laughs> we got the we gotta switch chairs because this is my this is my this side this is my bad side. You what know? you mean? It's my bad side. Bro. I seen that. It was right. In, I seen. This is how we gonna introduce this dude. Just just talking back. Hold on. Jeremy, there he's right there. Look at him. Hold on. Look, 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 look. Where is he? Why are you throwing? Nah, that's your part. <laughs> you <threw it>. <laughs> Smile. No, because you're gonna do the you gonna do the other thing, Aquaman. <laughs> Get all sorts of clock, copyright infringement. I gotta get this done, man. Oh man, you're gonna throw that over here and be like, hey, we're gonna get into the mode, clink. Are you gonna be good? Yeah. We gotta do our normal introduction. I can do an introduction just with the graphics. No, we've been doing normal. We, we, we did an introduction every other video. Now, why you wanna change it up? Because he's here and he can't it focus. Yeah, no, that's the point. <laughs> See? <laughs> get up in this camera. They can see me. Why your lips so big? I'm black. Has someone ever told you that you look just like Trevor Jackson? You wanna fight? Oh, win. That's filming right now. Come on. Capoeira versus kickboxing and wrestling. Who gonna win? No, you gotta pick one. No, both. <laughs> I'm using both. <laughs>
But you leaned over with. That was a terrible airplane. What is your problem? I have nothing else to work with. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> you finna get robbed today. They waterproof? So she was waterproof? <laughs> you finna throw them in the lake. <laughs> That's another four minutes right there. <laughs> oh. All right. That's you doing a lot of talking. Blip, 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 blip. Right in the nose. Uh -huh.